Well hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and indeed another talking tutorial. But it was an extremely hot day, um, the sun was shining um, really uh, strong. And the sun was coming really from behind these trees in the background. Now that really did give a lovely feeling of the overhanging trees. The tips of the overhang, the outside edges of each section of tree was very yellow green. Now obviously yellow green um, is... Um, um, is the thing really that attracted me to this subject and with the flower heads uh, it's, the sun was so strong that you'd expect them to be in silhouette really but they weren't they were actually um, pretty much as you see them you know they had the light behind them they really shone out uh, they really shined through the the darker area and to get I actually took a photograph and made a couple of sketches but to get the subject right if you stand and they're not the the flower heads were not that tall so as you stand up the flower heads go into the lighter area and you don't see the contrast so I knelt down a touch until at least the um, top half of the flower heads um, and some whole flower heads were actually into the greenery the dark green in the distance so when you look at these subjects you do need to just move around a bit you know to get the the, the, um, the perfect um, um, balance of lights and darks because that's what water painting a watercolor painting or any painting is really it's the light it's the darks mediums lights darks mediums and lights and that is really shown throughout this picture it's the t what we call tonal change it's the change of tone as well as color obviously and uh, uh, but it's the lights against the darks and the darks against the lights and that's the thing that uh, really um, uh, pulled me to this picture now when I started to paint, I, the, the, although there was blue in the sky, because the sun was so close to those different di distant trees, it, it was a yellow sky. So I thought, well, why not? So what I did, I put a yellow wash right the way through the complete subject. I just wetted the, 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 the paper and got uh, this. And that is the yellow tone that you can see. And that's the yellow tips as well. So really I put on the dark tone first. I then let that completely dry. Obviously it needs to completely dry before you overpaint. Um, then I started in the background and I put in a blue tone. So by the way, that's raw sienna. Um, it, pretty much pure raw sienna really, I think. the the underpainting, a clean, fresh, raw sienna. Then, once it completely dried, I used a little bit of cobalt blue with cadmium yellow. But notice how it's quite blue in places. That, and, and a little weaker, because as the sun shined through, you could actually, uh, it wasn't silhouette, it, it sort of glowed really, you know. And then as I worked forward, I looked at the different sections of trees. You've got a clump of trees there, then another clump there, another clump there, another clump there. And I just did a little bit of drawing just to make certain I knew roughly where they were. So I did the very distance. Then I introduced a little brown. See where it's gone a little bit on the grey side? So to that cobalt blue and, um, and uh, cadmium. Um, yellow I introduced a little burnt sienna not a lot but it just graded up I didn't want didn't want these strong colors too early 
Then as I painted, I painted in a medium tone, leaving touches of the underpainting showing. Then as I worked around, I added more blue and more brown. And you then pick around the edge of that and allow that to dry. Because the edge you leave will be the start of the next one. So that's the same there. The edge I left with this area will actually um, determine the shape of the next one. Then I actually used, I started to use a stronger blue. I used Windsor blue, you could use Prussian, Prussian blue. That's exactly the same. Well, it tends to fade easier, but um, either way, uh, Prussian blue, Windsor blue. And I used Windsor blue I used the red shade, um, but Prussian blue is quite fine. And But this time I went a little darker, uh, but still quite blue. Notice how there's a lot of blue in that, you know. You don't want too brilliant uh, as you work for uh, until you get right into the foreground. Then I painted up with a medium tone, then a darker tone. And all the time, um, as you come down to the edge of the field, I'm picking around the flower heads. So I didn't use any masking fluid. I could have done, but I much prefer to pick around objects if I possibly can, rather than use, using masking fluid. And then as I got down to this bottom edge, can you see where it's blurred? I didn't want a hard edge there because it would compete with the flower heads and the, the hard edge of the overhanging trees. I actually softened that and allowed that to com to to gradually soften in. Uh, in other words, just a damp brush and just pulled it down until I lost it into uh, into that original uh, raw sienna colour. Then I allowed it to dry and I did the same here. But this time, same three colours: ca um, cadmium yellow, Windsor blue, or Prussian blue. And then a little burnt sienna, purely to get that real dark. And this is really strong. So I'm going, I'm, I'm trying to get a feel of depth, not only within the um, the, the actual um, shape of them, but also with the colour. I did the same thing here, very dark now. So plenty of blue, uh, quite a bit of brown, um, very little cadmium going in here. Uh, and then picking around the flower heads and once I got to that area just a damp brush just to soften it um, It's not an easy thing to do um, But I mean just try one flower head, you know with a green and work your way around a flower head and put a stem in um, You know and work your way up from that really um, Then that completely dried then I used an extra lighter tone because I wanted to, to get the feel of real sunlight on that um, before I went very dark again. And this time I added burnt umber because burnt umber is a slightly darker brown than burnt sienna. And that way you get a really dark um, color, bluey green. Now with all these mixes, um, obviously to get a green, you have to have more blue and yellow in the mix. The brown makes it darker and a little bit more earthy. If you add too much brown, you just get a dark brown, really. Um, so that's that's the way I produce that. Then I quickly painted in the lower area again with a blue, a, a green. I suppose it's more or less that sort of tone. Quite a bit of blue in there. And then, while it was still damp, notice how I've dropped in some little shapes of leafing in the lower area. And I've pulled up, but you can still see some touches of that underpainting coming through. Um, don't overpaint everything. Then, I allowed that to dry. Then, once completely dry, I used cadmium yellow with a little burnt umber. Not a lot, but just a little. And I painted the outside around the seed head in the center, but not going to the outer tips because that's still that same underpainting color. So I did the larger ones first. Then I did the slightly smaller ones. Some are facing in a slightly different angle. 
um, at a, a slightly, slightly different angle and you can also see where those flower heads um, get smaller because that gives depth you know all the same size and all facing towards us it wouldn't look right so it's, it's one overlapping there um, the, the, they weren't laid out in that format I had to actually paint them to suit the landscape to, to actually you know you compose a picture you don't just take for granted quite often you know it's not well say quite often not very often that you've got the subject there that's absolutely perfect you have to just adjust it and I couldn't get the flower heads in exactly the right position but all I did is just move them around and tuck that one behind put a few smaller ones in that one less intense than that one these are the three dominant ones odd number with one behind so once the flower uh, petal areas are in I allowed that to dry then I used burnt umber I may have added a little blue could be cobalt um, to do the um, centers of all the flower heads then I allowed that to dry then I put in the stems and this time um, the blue and the green is exactly the same a bit more blue in the mix for the the, the um, sorry the, the leafing area so I put the stems in then the leafing the color mix is the same as the background but obviously it's a different tone it's not as dark and with all these little um, shapes that I put in while the underpainting was still wet you now get the solid shapes on top and that way you get a three-dimensional feel to give you depth in the field then finally I pulled in one or two little strokes I painted that bit of burnt umber bit of blue dropped in and really that was pretty much it you know uh, so don't shy away from this type of subject if it takes your eye have a go at it and don't try and paint all of the area of flower heads all at once just just as I say pick up one paint yourself more or less um, just that area there you know just that um, just move that tin out of the way um, paint that just that area there perhaps with the cluster of three perhaps that little section um, because there'll probably be plenty to, to, to deal with um, when you're you know if, you, if you're new to this sort of um, technique well I hope you enjoyed watching that it's um, uh, it, you know it's, it's a job sometimes to explain everything um, a demonstration is nice I think this is on my YouTube channel um, somewhere um, but just have a search through and uh, until you come to the sunflower one um, but I um, hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, talk tutorial and if you have please subscribe to my YouTube channel and these are updated every Wednesday at 6 p.m. UK time and my next um, demonstration and tutorial painting is on this coming Friday 6 p.m. UK time and I'm looking at a painting plein air in a lovely Essex farm um, around the stable area um, so that's quite an interesting little uh, little subject uh, uh, for next this coming Friday we'll see you all again and thank you all very much for watching take care <laughs>